relieved. We had this little talk. And it's so nice to know that you really care. Well, I'm interested in all my pupils. <laughs> and thank you very much for coming in. Oh, thank you, Miss Thank Collins. you much, ma'am. See you again. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Higgins. Oh, would you come in, please? <laughs> I'm Miss Collins, Bubba's teacher. Oh, how do you do? I'm Bubba's mama, and this here's Bubba's daddy, my husband, Ed. Ed, mm. how do you oh, do? This I here's Miss Collins. She teaches our Bubba. <laughs> Miss Collins, my mama is waiting outside. She's such a devoted grandma that she insisted on coming with us today to talk about Bubba. Oh, we'll bring her in by all means. Thank you so much. Mama! Mama! Mama, it's okay. You can come in, dear. <laughs> sit somewhere in the back and I promise not to butt in. Oh, now, Mama, come on as if anybody ever thought of you as butting in. <laughs> Miss Collins, this is my mama. Hi, this is Bubba's teacher, Miss <laughs> Collins. Last thing I won't become is one of their butt-in-ski grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like apparently I already have a tendency to open my mouth a little too often about my daughter's housekeeping. <laughs> now, Mama, Miss Collins don't want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> this classroom sure does bring the memories back, don't it, Ed? Ed. Did you sit down? Oh, thanks. Hi. Now, cute little dance. I've been wanting to speak to you for some time now. I have sent many notes home with Bubba asking you to contact me. Oh, yes, I know. You told me that over the telephone, Miss Collins. And, well, I do find it kind of hard to believe that my little Bubba wouldn't give me any of the notes that you'd, you've been sending home. I mean, I have always stressed the value of honesty in my house. Maybe so, Eunice, but you pay absolute, absolutely no attention to what either one of them boys watches on that television. I mean, they sit there by the hour watching liars and cheats and crooks. And then Margaret wiggling all around with next to nothing on. Mama, <laughs> could we just be quiet and listen like civilized human beings to what Miss Collin wants to tell us about Bubba? <laughs> now, I have an entire record of um, Bubba's school record. And I'm afraid to say that his studies and that his personal behavior are extremely poor. And they've been steadily going downhill since first grade. <laughs> now, I'm afraid, unless he changes his attitude drastically, the school will have no alternative but to expel him. Oh! Expel him? Expel my bubba? Did you hear that? I'm, oh, oh, they can't do that to my baby! He behaves himself whenever he's around me. I just say, bubba, now you be good for gam gam and gam gam. No, hold on now here, Miss Collins. Exactly what has my boy done to get this whole school in such a flap here? Here are a few of the facts. Bubba's handed in just one ass assignment so far this year. It was a hundred-word composition entitled What I Did This Summer. Well, Bubba wrote not much. <laughs> Fifty times. <laughs> stand and recite one stanza from Hiawatha, he said, the hell I will. <laughs> when asked to report to the principal's office, he set off the fire alarm en route. <laughs> on Monday, September the 15th, he threw a stink bomb into the teacher's lounge. On Tuesday the 16th... Well, do you need to hear more? How's he doing in athletics? <laughs> the other pupils will not permit him to play. You see, if he doesn't win, he throws a tantrum and, and usually hits someone, always someone smaller than himself. Well, that's something, anyway. Shows you got a little spirit in him. But don't you see that that spirit indicates a very, very disturbed child? No, come on now, hold on, Miss Collins. Let's not, let's not fall off the deep end just because the boy's kicking up his heels a little bit. But I didn't know he had an enemy. Such a pasty-faced little droop around the house. Here's another example of his kicking up his heels. This morning, he stole Margie Buchanan's chicken salad sandwich and forced her to eat his own bologna sandwich. Nearly choked the poor child to death. <laughs> Just wait just a minute. Let me get something straight here. How do you know he did that? Did you see him do that? Well, no, no. It, it was reported to the principal by another child. Well, what are you going to do? Well, listen to some little snitcher? Well, 
Well, the snitcher in this instance was his own brother, Billy Joe. <laughs> That's one thing Bubba cannot resist, is good chicken salad. Last time the boys were over at my house, I made up a big bowl of it. It was gone for lunch. <laughs> what you gotta do, Eunice, is cut up them little sweet pickles. We know. don't need your recipe for chicken salad, Mama. Thank you very much. Poor little tykes. I think I'd steal some chicken salad too fall I ever got was bologna sandwiches day after day. Do not start on me on how I feed my boys, Mama. I see to it that they get more than bologna sandwiches. I want you to know that. I really see to it. I mean, sometimes they get potato chips and ho-hos and cheese snaps and Lord knows what all. Yes, well, would you let me show you something? Now, we asked all the children to draw pictures of their homes. Now, as you can see, most of the children drew houses and they drew a parent figure and child figures. And we also asked them to draw an arrow indicating themselves. Now, as you can see in all these drawings, the child has drawn himself as a human-sized individual, you know, in relationship to the parents. Now, if you would just look at this, this is, um, this is Bubba's drawing. I'll see that. <laughs> is that supposed to be my hair? <laughs> This drawing suggests how little and insignificant he feels in his own home. Well, he always was small for his size. Look how he thinks my hair looks. My hair don't look like my hair. I'm trying to draw your attention to this little dot that he thinks of as himself. Well, he's always been frail. He don't get enough to eat. I am not in the mood for this, Mama. Will you please, please let us concentrate on Baba. We are here for his welfare. He's failing in all his courses. Therefore, I cannot overemphasize to you the importance of an open, loving home climate. Well, what y'all looking at me for? Oh, I get it. I get it. You're going to lay it all at my feet, just like all them other teachers did. It's Eunice's fault, huh? Eunice is the heavy. I'm always the goat. Well, just when am I ever going to get off the pan? Will somebody tell me that? Eunice, if we can't to what this lady's got to say. Why don't you sit down so we can listen? Well, we came here to hear what she has to say, Mama, not what you have to say. Well, I got a right to speak up about my own grandson. Well, then, okay, why don't you take over? <laughs> Do you hear how she talks to me? Well, guess I'd better go after her. No, no, perhaps Mrs. Higgins would like to have time to think things over. It might be nice to take advantage of a little breather. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't. I just just ain't like me to fly off the handle. Like that. I guess I just I just let it get to me. That's all. And I got a little upset. I'm I'm sorry. I know. I, Shouldn't take myself so seriously and all. So, uh, my apologies, Miss Collins. <laughs> you just had some truth. You do take things way too seriously. I know, Mama. Isn't that what I just said? I just said I take things way too seriously. Didn't you hear me say that? <laughs> I'm only trying to take a little interest in my grandson's welfare. I know you are, Mama, but the point is the boys are my responsibility. <laughs> And I have given up my life for those boys, Miss Collins. I want you to know that. I have given everything to those boys. I have been their mama, and I've been their papa. And I'm the only one who's ever around to give them any discipline. What the hell I'm supposed to do? Stay home 24 hours a day? Besides, I've walloped those kids many a time. That's your answer to everything, isn't it? A heck, a lot easier on them than my daddy was on me. I didn't enjoy those wallopings, but by golly, he made a man out of me. I think maybe he was a couple of wallopings short. You're really on thin ice, old woman. Look, none of you seem to realize that without some responsible parental guidance, your son is headed for big trouble. Big, fat, awful 
from Bob. <laughs> Dresses, Eunice, you want Miss Collins to think that I let you run around naked? They were my sister Ellen's hand me down. She never bought me a dress of my own in my whole life, you nigga! <laughs> now you use a different tone of voice, Missy. I am still your mother and you listen here to me. I warned you if you married this big bozo, you was gonna wind up giving birth to a bunch of freaks. <laughs> You listen to what this lady's telling you. You give them plenty to eat, you give them a pat on the back once in a while, and you let them know you're behind them 100%. That's the way I raised all of my kids. What? <laughs> what am I hearing rightly? When? When did you ever give me a pat on the back, huh? You know what I thought of when I walked into this classroom? I remember that day that Ms. Oates called you in on account of I got Anne Marie Bittner a little bit wet. And did you say I'm behind her 100%? Uh-uh, no, uh-uh, boy, you told me so. She said, you just say the word and I'll pack her off to reform school. <laughs> but, but when I went in to complain to her because my sister, Mary Ellen, squirted me with a, with, a, with a water gun, Mama said, be a good sport, Eunice. Ellen's just having a little bit of fun. And then, just because I fill up some tiny little balloons with water and, and let them drop off the school roof, why, you just give me hell and you treat me like a criminal! Damn it, Eunice, where did you ever get the idea that a water gun and water bombs was the same thing? You almost gave that poor little girl a concussion. <laughs> to this very day, Anne Marie Bittner's mother will not speak to me. Well, so what? Why'd you want to speak to that old prune anyway? She's just like her daughter. Neither one of them can take a joke. But you never did stand up for me, did you? I will have order. Sit at your desks at once. <laughs> This is my classroom, and you will behave yourself. My name is Miss Collins. I am the teacher. You are the parents. You have come here today so that we can discuss your brat, so let's discuss him. <laughs> now, you know, when, when I first met Bubba, I thought he was the most hateful bully I had ever met. But having met his parents, I have only sympathy for him. A belligerent, insensitive father, a selfish mother, and an uncaring, bitter grandmother. These are the people he has to come home to every day. I don't live with them. <laughs> well, that's one small mercy for Bubba. Now, let me tell you something. We are going to make a better life for Bubba, even if it means I have to come over to your house every day and knock your heads together. From now on, you're going to give some loving care and attention to his life and his welfare. That's all. I'll see you the same time again next week. Well, I don't believe I've ever been spoken Class to. Class my... dismissed. <laughs> no, just to don't burn... get out. Out. <laughs> out. <laughs> what did I tell you? What? What kind of a chance has our boy got in this place, huh? Board education's gonna hear about this. Why the hell did you drag me down? Well, who the hell? Who the hell did you? <laughs> who the hell did you? Oh, Boba. We've got a lot of work to do. 